Okay. Yeah. So just to kind of go back over what all is coming up this week, we've got, well, it's not on here, but <clears throat> this week, uh, for every class except for my 0201 class, you'll have the statistics and probability test opened up. Make sure you do that first. The linear section one and linear section two, they're both opened up. Uh, this week and next week we'll be going over that. They're open now so you can do them whenever you want. Um, I've already got some older videos in there. If you want to use those, that's fine. Uh, I know we're, we're trying to cram in the rest of our um, the rest of our regular assignments this week. So they're open now, so you can do them whenever you want to. Next week, uh, also for the Fast Track 2 folks, this Thursday, which mine are doing good. I don't anticipate any of them needing to do this, but if you are in a Fast Track 2 class for some other subject, um, the 18th is the last day to take yourself out of that. Next week, um, the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, We've got a lot of stuff going on. So again, it's early registration for summer from eight to five each day that week. It's also gonna be our second redo week, which I know that's very soon considering that we just had one, but uh, this will be for, you know, the, prob uh, you know, for everybody except 0201, the stats and probability test, and then uh, it'll be the redos for the linear sections if those don't do good. And also, that week, the final exam also opens. Uh, now, we are still gonna have class that week, even though the final is open, because we're gonna be doing final review. I would not start the final until you've had at least one class where we've done final review. All right, and then it'll, it'll open on the 22nd. The final and any remaining redo work is due April the 30th. There'll be no more assignments accepted after this date. So, you know, every semester, you know, I always get a wide range of things that have affected people. I've had a lot of folks um, in that boat, <clears throat> but, um, and you know, that, that can't be helped. You know, I've had medical stuff. Some folks have had medical things. Um, a lot of folks, it's like, you know, car trouble, travel distance, you know, all, all sorts of things that uh, hinder us. But that set aside, Anything that you still need to get turned in, if it's not turned in by the 30th, it will not be turned in. All right, so uh, sooner rather than later, as they say. And again, this is to give our folks in the administrative building time to get their reports done after we send our grades in, because they have reports they can't do till we get ours done. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, on May 1st, all the course grades will be finalized and be available in Moodle. Uh, Self-service, it'll probably be, um, well, they're supposed to, like, communicate with each other. So hopefully, once I get them done in Moodle, they'll show in self-service. I honestly don't know. It's kind of a crapshoot. So just, just check them both. And, of course, if you're graduating this semester, first of all, I hope you applied to graduate, because a lot of people forget to do that. But uh, graduation is May the 10th at 5.30 p.m., most likely in the uh, in low building. That's where it usually is. I haven't heard anything different yet. Um, I know one year during the pandemic, they did it outside. Um, but uh, that, that, I think that was the only one that I knew of. But anyway, yeah, so lots of stuff coming up. Uh, you know, <clears throat> lots of uh, things cooking in the pan, so to speak. All right, so again, the official, official last day of classes is going to be May 6th, but for, for us, for Math 143, it'll be April 30th. And don't, of course, don't forget about early summer registration. Okay, so first things first. Again, <clears throat> uh, for the probability and statistics test. Now, like I mentioned, and you know, because I upload the same videos to all the sections, I'm just going to write this on here. Uh, uh, shoot, boy, you can tell I've been out two weeks. 0201 already did this. And that was entirely by accident on my fault. I opened it for him too early. But 
actually what I did I was with the fast tracks I open it each week by sections so that like you know this week you got this section this week you got this section and so on so uh, 0201 this is not assigned to you this week you've already got it done well for whenever they watch this video but <clears throat> I did um, you know record I've got two test review videos in here for you to check out one from last November and one from this March so I'm not gonna you know I know I said that we would kind of go back over the probability and statistics stuff when I got back but when I looked at the pacing and things of that that's not really gonna be feasible so please 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 before you take this test go back and watch these video at least one of these videos okay and of course uh, you know here are the uh, answer entries make sure that you get those done if you're having any sort of computer trouble like if you have anything if you're having trouble getting stuff to submit in Moodle please reach out to Carissa Cornwell or Donnie Morrow a maybe it's a Zscaler problem maybe it's a Chromebook problem maybe it's a who knows what problem honestly um, just make sure that you got your Moodle working because if that's preventing you from getting your stuff turned in that's going to hinder you all right yeah, so 0201 does not have to do this this week because they did it uh, last week or the week before. But everybody now should have linear functions showing and linear and nonlinear functions and graphs showing as well. Today we're going to start by talking on linear functions, okay? Uh, First of two sections pertaining to the linear versus nonlinear portion of the course. It pertains to aspects of slope and y-intercepts of linear graphs. There won't be a test after this section is done. Okay, this is the only section that we have where you are not going to be tested on it, mainly because there is not time. Uh, but also because, you know, when I took this class over, this sec I had to add this section in, and by the time I added it in, I figured, you know, it's so short. Uh, you know, we don't really need to test on it. It'll be on the final, so, you, you know, it'll be tested on there. Okay, <clears throat> so open this file that says linear functions notes updated 11, 7, 23. All right. Also, and I'll try to have this ready for you by next week. I didn't get to it today. Uh, you know, I've still got a lot of videos in here for you to check out from November. I'm recording this one, so you can check that one out too. I've got diagrams from the, not that one, where's the little one? Yeah, there it is. I've got diagrams from the Big Fat Math Notebook uploaded in here that we're going to check out too because uh, this has some things that we need to know that's not covered uh, in the notes and things. Okay, graph paper, all right? So in order to save on you know, our printing and the paper that we have here, at some point this week, please go into this folder where it says graph paper options and pick the one that you like so that you can uh, work on it. I have a couple extra still printed. If anybody needs one, I'll just set them right there. Um, but, Everybody must be hopping on the Moodle because this is taking forever to open. Yeah, it's 820. I guess that's about time everybody to hop on. Um, but there's one page that has 12 10 by 10 size graphs, which is, that's the one that I got there. There's one page that's full of grid boxes and one page that has an individual graph on it. So, uh, you know, whenever we start looking at linear uh, graphs and things, we'll pull those up. I usually, let's see, which one did I use last? semester. I think I used this one. Let's see. Yeah, I think I used that one. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so back to the notes. Should be linear notes updated 11.7. So just go ahead and pull that up when you get a minute. All right. Okay, so let's go over some definitions. So linear of course, you know, what's the root word in linear? Mm -hmm. Linear functions make linear graphs, and linear graphs are a straight line. Now, that should be 
that, you know, I, uh, one thing I forgot to put in here. It's a straight diagonal line. All right, it's not straight up and down. It's not horizontal. It's diagonal. If it's straight up and down or straight across, that's something different. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. All right, but it's a straight diagonal line. So when the independent variable x and the dependent variable y have a functional relationship that makes a straight line when you graph it, that's when you say something is linear. Okay, so in other words, if you were to put this on a uh, graph, it looked like this. Or it looked like this. So it kind of goes back to scatter plots, right? Remember how the grouping of scatter plots, if it was leaning to the right, it was positive. If it was uh, going down to the right, it was negative. Well, with positive and negative linears, leaning to the right, positive, leaning to the left, negative. All right. It's built off of something called the slope intercept form. All right. Now, slope intercept form, when you first learned it in school, you probably learned it as y equals mx plus b, right? We are going to use y equals mx plus or minus b because sometimes b is positive and sometimes b is negative and it's just kind of good to incorporate that in there. And it doesn't, really, it doesn't mean that you're going to like both add and subtract it. It's just a notation thing. But we'll talk more about that shortly. Growth rate is changing by the same amount with each independent variable x. And this is just a reference to slope. Slope means that between each point on this line, you have the same vertical and horizontal distance. All right. Slope intercept form is the model used to build a linear equation. It's called a form, but it actually works like a formula. And the reason why it works like a formula is because it has variables that you have to substitute for to make it work. All right, let me move this over here and I'll come stand over here so that y'all can see. All right, so <clears throat> over here on the right, I've got what each of these four variables represents, okay? So again, the basic root form of slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus or minus b. y is what is called your output or your dependent variable. In other words, whatever y is depends on everything else on the right that happens to x because uh, x is your input or your independent variable, okay? Now the difference between the independent and dependent variables, if you know this from you know, your science classes, you're already ahead of the curve. Independent variables are gonna do what they are gonna do. We kinda talked about that with scatter plots and how we like to have you know, the independent variables on your x-axis, things like time, or you know, things that are gonna you know, act on their own or not go, uh, or not change direction on you, basically. <clears throat> So X is always your input, your independent, and Y is your output, your dependent. It's what comes out of this function once everything that happens to X has already happened to it. M is slope. I've said this ever since I've started teaching. I have no idea why the letter M is used for slope. I'm sure somebody does. I'm fully confident that somebody on YouTube knows exactly why they use that letter. My guess is that they used S for speed, and it was already, and so they, they didn't want to do it again. Uh, and then plus or minus B is what is called your Y-intercept. What the Y-intercept is, is where the line cuts across the Y-axis, all right? So let's look at a couple of uh, examples. I think I got some down here. All right, so, well first let's talk about slope, yeah. <clears throat> slope is how the x-coordinate or your dependent variable changes 
in relation to how the x coordinate or independent variable changes. When you've done slope in the past, you've heard it called a bunch of different things. Uh, change in y over change in x, rise over run, vertical over horizontal, right? All of those are true. Also true for slope is that you need a minimum of two points to calculate it. That's it. But the problem that a lot of folks have with finding slope is that points are pairs. They have an x and they have a y, and a lot of times folks get them jumbled. They put them in the wrong spot. It happens all the time. I wish there was a surefire way to keep from doing that, but the only way I've found to help you keep from doing that is by labeling them every time you get ready to find them. So if you're given two points, your first point, you can label it as X1 and Y1, and then the second point can be labeled as X2 and Y2. Uh, where folks run aground with these is that they label the first point X1, X2, and the second point Y1, Y2, and then they're just kind of um, messed up from there. So slope again, change in Y divided by the change in X, or in other words, just over the change in X because you're actually not going to divide it. You're going to leave it as a fraction. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But change in Y over change in X, which means that you're going to do Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Your second Y minus your first Y over your second X minus your first X. All right, so there's the formula for slope. My other piece of advice, other than, you know, just labeling the points every time, is every time you have to find the slope, write the formula down. Even if you know it by heart, every time you do one, write the formula down, because that will also help you remember where everything is supposed to go. Y-intercept, we mentioned, is where it cuts across the y-axis. All right, so that's your plus or minus b. It's also the starting point of your graph, and it can be positive or negative, all right? <clears throat> so for instance, I'm gonna put, let's see. I'm gonna put this one on the screen down on the bottom, and then I'm gonna see if I can turn my camera towards the graph board without, you know, the gates of hell opening up because you know how technology is. All right. Okay. Well, all right, I guess that'll work. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got that table on the board over there. And we're gonna look at a couple of different things. So first, this is just using the function to find what your y values are. So in this instance, what happened was you were given this function here that said, here's the function y equals 2x plus 4. Here are your x's. They were given. The y's were not. So what you had to do was substitute those x's into the equation and solve them for the y and then put them together in an ordered pair. So first off, if we have negative 2, that means that negative 2 will be substituted in place of x besides positive 2, and then it just becomes order of operations. So 2 times negative 2 plus 4. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 makes 0. So there is your first pair of negative 2, 0. All right. So I'm going to mark this on my graph board here. Again, if you want some graph paper to kind of follow along, there's some over there. If, you're, if you just want to draw it on notebook paper, that'll be fine too. So negative two, zero. Well, first let me put the equation up here. It said y equals two x plus four. This is number one. Okay, so negative two, zero is right there. You go left two on the x, and you don't have any vertical change, so you just leave it, all right? Uh, all right, zero. Okay, so now zero goes in place of x. Two times zero is zero. Zero plus four is four. So zero, four is your next one. Okay, so zero, four is going to go here. 
Lastly, you had an X of one that was given to you. So that one goes in right there. Two times one is two, two plus four is six. So that's gonna make one six as our third point. So I'm gonna go out one, up six, and then there you go. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things to note, all right? So negative two, zero. You see how it landed on the x-axis over there? When the point lands on the x-axis, that is called the x-intercept. The x-intercept is not in the slope-intercept form. So it's almost worthless. Almost. This one, you see where our 0, 4 landed? 0, 4 landed on the y-axis. That means that is the y-intercept. Now, you know we hate to play favorites, but this one, very valuable, okay? Because look, y-intercept there, y-intercept there. Those numbers were the same, weren't they? So if you were, were gonna to try to graph this without running the table, that positive four is the first thing that goes on the graph. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. And then this is just an extra point because you really only need uh, two points to make a line. You only need two points to find a slope. You only need two points to make a line. But it helps, if you don't know that, to have three X's for your graph. One on the left side of the Y axis, one on the Y axis if you can, or, and one on the right side of the Y axis. Or at the very least, one on each side if you can. Okay. So, now that we've got those points on there, when you're making these, or if you're checking them, you just take your straight edge. I always whack the ruler, but, and then there you go. There's y equals 2x plus 4. Easy peasy, right? Let's do another one. And I know we're going at like a million miles an hour here, but I'm trying to make sure that we get both these lessons done this week. Okay, next one, y equals x minus five. All right. This is gonna be number two. X minus five. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's say again, you're not entirely confident with just taking the equation as it is and slapping it on a graph right away. Or maybe that's not even what the question is asking. Maybe the question is just asking which one of these ordered pairs uh, fits on this line. So if that's the case, then you don't have to graph it. You just go ahead and figure out what the ordered pairs are. So they gave you this function. Here are your x's. Okay, so that means that each one of those x's gets substituted in and ran through the function to get the y. x goes in, y comes out. x is your input, y is your output. Think of it like a factory processing raw materials. x is your raw materials, y is the, I don't know, laptop that comes out or whatever, you know, whatever they make these days. So negative one goes in place of x, negative one minus five is the same as negative one plus negative five, so that makes negative six. There's your pair. Positive two goes in, two minus five, or two plus negative five, makes negative three. So you got an ordered pair of two, negative three. And then three goes in, three minus five, so three, uh, three minus five or three plus negative five gets you, let me circle that one, gets you negative two. So then there's your three points, all right? <clears throat> so if you're gonna graph it using the points, so we got negative one, negative six. So left one, down six. There that is. Two, negative three. So right two, down three. So there that is. And then three, negative two. So right three, down two. There that is. I missed one of these. Negative one, negative six, two, negative three, two, negative three, and then 
Ah, let's see what I did. <clears throat> I put it on negative one because it was supposed to line up and it wasn't lining up. What is it that my daughter says? The math isn't mathing. I don't know. I'm old. I turned 40 this week. I don't know what they say. All right. So there is another linear function. All right. So there's that. Again, this was all using the function with a set of x values and running it through to find what the y values are and getting the pairs. These questions didn't say that you had to graph them. I'm just going ahead and graphing it so that we can go ahead and start getting a, uh, exposure to that. All right. Graphing using points or the equation. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to put this one over here. I'm going to show you both ways to make a graph. One is quicker than the other one, but this is one of those instances where the quicker way is a little more advanced. All right. So points versus equation. All right. So here's our, uh, let's do the points first. All right. Tell you what, let's do this just so that we can make it pretty. I'll do the points in black. I'll do the equation one in blue. I don't think it's going to matter, but you know, it breaks it up a little bit. So here's our function. Y equals 2x plus 4. All right. Now, what I used to tell, or what I've told my students in the past, is if they don't give you a set of x's, just use something like negative 1, 0, and 1, or negative 2, 0, and 2, or something like that. This one was actually provided, though, so we'll go ahead and use those. So it gave us the three points of negative 2, 0, what did I say, 0, 4, and... 1, 6. Okay. So we're going to take these three points and throw them on here. So negative 2, 0, 0, 4, and 1, 6. I think this is the first one that we did. Yeah. Okay. So with this one, you just take those three points that you find after you run the function. And there you go. Right? Now, of course, lines go all the way across the graph. I just, you know, Ain't no need for that today on this. Okay, now using the equation is a little bit different. 2x plus 4. When you use the equation, you have two steps that you have to follow. The first step is you mark the y-intercept. Okay? The y-intercept is alphabetically the one that would go, would go first, right? Y equals M X plus or minus B. That is the main reason why they put uh, B for the Y intercept. They had a whole bunch of reasons for not using Y. Y was already used for the output, uh, you know, chief among them there. Okay, so to graph it just using the equation, follow the steps. All right, so your first step is mark the Y intercept. Well, my Y intercept is plus 4 or positive 4, go up to 4 on the y, mark it, you're good. The second thing you do is you walk the slope. Now what we mean by walking the slope is we look at the slope, all right? So right now our slope is 2, right? Look over there on the board. Slope likes to be a fraction when you're graphing, okay? Slope likes to be a fraction when you're graphing. Sometimes they're going to give you the slope as a whole number. Sometimes they're going to give it to you as a decimal. Sometimes they're going to give it to you as a mixed number. Slope likes to be a fraction when, it, when uh, graphing. If it's improper, that's fine. Most of the time it actually will be improper. <clears throat> so if we get a slope that's a whole number, so in this case a slope of 2, we're going to change that 
to 2 over 1. Here's why. When you're graphing just using the equation, if you just used 2 and just went up 2 and marked a point and drew your line and called it a day, you're going to miss it. Because linear uh, equations cannot be straight up and down or all the way across. They have to have lean to them. So you're going to go up 2, so 2 up, 1 right. So up 2, right 1, there's the second point. And if you like to, you know, freeze frame videos or whatever, you can put this graph over the one we just did and you'll see that they're the same. All right. So that leads me into the next thing we're going to talk about. Each part of the slope, the top and bottom number, they do something, right? So for slope, and let me just do this over here so it's a little bit easier to see. All right. Put this back on just on two. Okay. <clears throat> so with slope, if the, uh, let's see, Vertic let's talk about the vertical number, okay? So slope is vertical over horizontal, right? Vertical number goes on top, the horizontal number goes on the bottom. If the vertical number is positive, that means you go up. That looks like T up. Let's fix that. If the vertical number is positive, that means that you go up. And then if it is negative, you go down. So if that had been negative 2x, that would have made negative 2 over 1. That means we would have went down to right 1. The horizontal number, if the, horizontal, the, if the bottom number is positive, you go right. And if it's negative, you go left. Now, I will say, eesh, that did not turn out the way that I hoped it would. It's going to look bad. Uh, I will say this. Hardly ever are you going to see a slope that's like, like say if it were going back to if it were negative 2, they will almost always write it as negative 2 over 1. They will hardly ever write it as 2 over negative 1. Almost never, honestly. But now you know. Okay, so vertical. For the vertical number, positive up, negative down. For the horizontal number, positive right, negative left. And the reason for this is because it follows the signage of the x and y axis. All right, so vertical is your y, right? So going up the y axis, you have positive numbers. Going down the y axis, you have negative numbers. And then horizontal, to the right, they're all positive. To the left, they're all negative. All right, everybody kind of following that? Yeah, like I said, I know we're going a million miles an hour here, but we'll get it. Okay, so reading graphs. Okay, so let's say that you're going to be reading a pre-built graph, all right, which most of the time that's what you're going to be asked to do just because of the Moodle format, and I don't have any place for you to actually upload a graph on this one because we're just kind of going back to the quizzes. Um, but here's, what, here's how it is, okay? So we got this graph here, all right? Actually, let me do this. Let me copy this one over on the board so it's easier to see. Let's do that again. All right. Okay. So we've got points of 0, 4, and looks like 2, 2. So 0, 4, and 2, 2. All right. Let me just take all this stuff off here. So I got room. And then I need to grab my ruler. Got too many toys to play with today. All right. So. All right. So reading a graph, 
Okay. Let me zoom this in just a little. Okay, there we go. All right. So, first, anytime you're reading a graph, you always want to find where your y intercept is. Your y intercept is the first thing that you graph if you're making a graph. It's also the first thing that you look for if you have one that's already pre built. So, find your y intercept. Well, here is your y axis. There is your y intercept, right? So, you've got a b of positive 4. All right. Next, find the slope by walking to the next point. So what that means by walking to the next point is start at the y-intercept and look where the next point is that's being shown. It's right here. All right, so we're going to walk to that one, which means that we're going to go down one, two. So down two and then right two. So if we went down two and right two, that means that we have a slope of negative two over two, which is negative one over one, or just negative one, right? Okay. Now, the last thing you have to do is just build the equation. And the only way, the way that you build the equation, you just take those two pieces you found and throw them into slope intercept form. So we've got B here, we got M here, so y equals mx plus or minus b. Throw in what you got. We know b is plus 4. We know m is negative 1. So y equals negative 1x plus 4. Or if you're going to go for the simplified version, it would just be y equals negative x plus 4. They consider negative 1x plus 4 to be unsimplified. Doesn't bother me in the least little bit because, you know, there's nothing wrong with a placeholder. But this one is the one that would be showing up in a multiple choice option. All right, this one probably would not be there because it's not simplified. All right, let me switch that back to the big screen so that everybody can see it. All right, so again, when you have a graph that's already built, find your y-intercept, identify it from there, walk to the second point. It might be above it, it might be below it. And then take note of what direction that you walked so that you know what your signage is going to be, all right, whether it's positive or negative. And then build the equation, all right? So substitute what you found and then simplify it and then you're good to go, okay? Finding slope from two points. Okay, again, the slope formula. Every time you have a problem where you have to find the slope, please, please, please copy it down. All right, copying it down is the best way to get it memorized. All right, so here's an example. We've got 0, 5, and 6, negative 3. All right, so I'm going to turn this back towards this board and hope to God that this microphone doesn't fall off because its base is broken. Oh, well. It's like looking at every little crevice on that whiteboard because I had, it, I had it zoomed in too far. All right. Let's do this. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's look at the first question that it said. All right. Let's see. Finding slope. <coughs> from two points. All right, so I think this was example number four in the notes. All right, so we've got two points. We got zero, five, and six, negative three. All right, again, first things first, label every point. So here is your first point, zero, five. This is x1 and y1. Okay. The second point is where you're going to find x2 and y2. Okay. All right. Once you've got them labeled, go ahead and do your slope formula. And by oops, 
<clears throat> I mean, copy it down. All right. Every time you have to find the slope by hand, copy it down. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. All right. Now that you got everything labeled, throw it in there. So Y2, negative 3. Go ahead and bring your minus over. Y1 is 5. So negative 3 minus 5. X2 minus X1 goes on the bottom. So X2 is 6. Bring over your minus. X1 is 0. Go ahead and put that in. Double check. Make sure you got everything in the right place. Y2 minus Y1 should be negative 3 minus 5. There you go. X2 minus X1 should be 6 minus 0. There you go. Then just go ahead and finish it off. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. 6 minus 0 is 6. Now, you know, like I said, that's not simplified. With slope, when I say simplify, I don't mean turn it into a mixed number. If you turn this into a mixed number, you're not going to be able to do anything with it as far as graphing. There's no harm in leaving it improper. But when you are dealing with slope, you want the smallest numbers possible. You want the shortest distance possible. Negative 8 and 6, you can divide them both by 2. So you got negative 4 over 3 as your slope, which means that if you are going to graph this, you're going to be going down 4, right 3. Okay? Looks like a lot. It really isn't. Let's do another one. All right. So here is number five from the notes. All right. So number five, we've got two negative three and four one. Don't have much time left. This might be it. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and get everything labeled. So x1, y1, x2, y2. So copy down your slope formula. You've got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 minus y1 should say 1 minus negative 3. 1 minus negative 3. x2 minus x1 should say 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2. There you go. All right. 1 minus negative 3, those are opposites. Keep change, change. That's going to be 1 plus positive 3. And 4 minus 2, we don't have to mess with that one. So 1 plus 3, that's going to be 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. That's going to be 2 over 1 or 2. Which means you're going to go up to right 3 on one like that. Okay. All right, we've got about six minutes left. Let's keep on pushing along here. Remember that if you're graphing, you use the fraction. Okay, so like if you had to put this on the board over there, you would leave that one where it is to remind yourself not to just make a straight vertical line, right? Uh, if you're going to do an equation, the equation will usually take it off. The equation would be using it as y equals 2x plus whatever. All right, so keep that, keep that in mind there. Okay, uh, let me just kind of, yeah, we don't have time for this. Okay, <clears throat> so on our, uh, in our next class, we're going to, uh, somebody make a note because I will probably forget. In our next class, we're going to be starting right here with point slope form. In terms of difficulty, this is the most difficult aspect of this uh, section. Um, but uh, we will definitely pick up from there next time we come in. Let me make sure that on the linear versus nonlinear section, we don't have anything else that we've got to make sure that we take care of. No, this looks like the same file. Uh, yeah. Actually, this is the incomplete file. This is the old file. I need to take this out. Crap. Oops. <clears throat> but, 
A couple other things that we will look at uh, our next class period. So, oops, let me go back to this here. All right. All right. We'll look at the student copy next class as well. Well, actually, next class we're going to be looking at both student copies. Linear Lab 1 examples with solutions. All right, so if you open that, this was from, I think I did this out at Andrews at the high school, and I, I had a lot of work with it, so I just kind of kept it in. So we'll look at this on our next class period. A lot of this was, the whole thing was uh, dealt with finding the slope-intercept equation, uh, but it deals with point-slope form uh, a lot, and you can see all that in there too. And we got some graphs and things like that. So. We'll look at that during our next class. You can check it out on your own. I mean, there's no harm in looking ahead, um, you know, because we only get like 50 minutes a pop here. Okay, this slope page, <clears throat> please make sure that you look at this page in between now and our next class, especially this chart here that there are four types of slope. Okay, so positive slope leaning to the right, negative slope leaning to the left, Undefined slope is straight up and down, and a zero slope is all the way horizontal. Technically, I guess you could say that these are linear graphs, but they are not functions because uh, y is not dependent on x in those graphs. All right, and here is some more practice using the slope formula. Up here at the top, this is another example of walking the slope. They basically turn it into a right triangle uh, if, if you want to do it that way. Kind of a little bit extra work, but it's uh, pretty good stuff. Okay, now if you are going to be looking ahead to the linear versus non-linear and non-linear functions and graphs section, which again is also open right now, uh, first uh, remember this is an old file. I'm going to take it out after this class, so just you know, don't worry about it. Uh, the new one is in the other section. I'll try to bring it over. Uh, again, lots of videos in here from previous sections. Here is another example of using a function table. We, just, you know, we talked about that at the beginning of the notes. Um, <clears throat> shoot, I had it on the tiny little screen the whole time. That's going to be great. Um, yeah, so here's another example of using a function table. This one had four inputs in it, so it, it was just kind of giving you practice. Each input goes into the function for x, you do order of operations to get your output, then put it back together as an ordered pair. Uh, then what they did was that they just took the function and graphed it. So 5x plus 2, plus 2 there, 5x means 5 over 1, up 5, right 1, there's your next point. All right. Nonlinear functions and the quadratic function, we will most likely get to that during our next class period. All right. And it, this, all this is, is what, what do you do when you have an exponent on your x, all right? Uh, then we have some other stuff in here for you to look ahead if you want to do that. Uh, the, the lab for linear and nonlinear functions and graphs is pretty big. There's 20 questions, and, uh, 25 questions total, 20 about linear, 5 about nonlinear. So there's 25 on that, and I can't remember how many on the other one. Um, but uh, we'll look at that next week, or not, ne not next week. You can tell I'm still in vacation mode. We'll look at that next class because it is now time for y'all to go. All right. If you have any questions while you're working on this, hit me up. Send me a Moodle message, email, whatever you need to do. Uh, if your Moodle messages are not getting through to me, you're going to have to add me as a contact. Uh, it's just some, some kind of a weird, glitchy thing. But just make sure that you got that working, all right? All right, see y'all next class.